the best version of yourself. It sounds like a bit of a catchphrase, doesn't it? And it's everywhere now too. It's all over social media. It's in all the self-help books. It's in a lot of motivational speeches. And I use it a lot too. But strip away the hype. There's actually a powerful truth in this statement slash question. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Cully, and I'm on a mission to help you evolve into the best version of yourself. And that's exactly what I'm talking about today. The best version of yourself, and more importantly, why you're not that person yet, and what you need to do to become it. When we think about the highest version or the best version of yourself, what does that really mean? With so much noise out there, it's very easy to get lost in the confusion. Now, it doesn't mean being flawless, and it doesn't mean being superhuman either. This is actually quite a deep, personal thing. For you, it might mean achieving peak physical health. Maybe it means keeping your word to yourself or waking up early like you say you're always going to do. Maybe it means changing your diet intake. Becoming the best version of yourself is simply fulfilling your unique potential. You see, there is a version of you that exists who wakes up without snoozing. There is a version of you who works out regularly because, you know, it's a bit of a necessity. There's a version of you who doesn't lie to other people. And there's a version of you who doesn't lie to yourself. There is a version of you who's in complete control of their thoughts, their actions, and their emotions. They don't talk negatively to themselves. They don't put themselves down. They don't overthink. They don't have self-esteem issues and they don't have self-doubt issues either. They are the ultimate creator of their reality. And that version of you is living the life that you've always wanted to live. Unfortunately, you are not that version of yourself today. And if you're honest with yourself, you already know this. The question then becomes, how do you bridge the gap between who you are now to who you want to become? Because believe it or not, there is a gap. And that's what we're talking about today. I'm gonna to break it down for you in easy, simple to follow steps. First things first, get clear on what it means to be the best version of yourself. Now, if you don't know what the best version of you looks like, then you can't become that version of you, can you? That's like building a skyscraper with no blueprint. It's not going to look very eye-catching, is it? So pause this video if you need to, but I want you to do this exercise. Imagine yourself five years from now, like really begin to visualize this. Start to imagine your perfect situation, your day-to-day -day life, all the things that you've ever wanted. What does that version of you look like? How do they think? How do they talk? How do they dress? Now connect deeply with your purest ambitions. The point of this is that everything that exists in the physical world was once imagined in the mind first. So by visualizing, you're stimulating your brain's reticular activating system. And that's the goal getter inside of you. It helps you consciously spot opportunities and makes the connections that you need in order to help you achieve those goals. Visualization is a proven way to boost your confidence and that self-belief so you can commit to your goals. Athletes do it all the time. They visualize themselves winning the game before the game even starts. Not only does it sharpen your focus, but it primes your mind and body to act as if you were already in that moment. Then you need to write out what that version of you looks like. This makes it more real to your mind. Think of it like entering a destination into Google Maps. It plots the route from where you are now to where you want to be. When your ideal life or the best version of you is down on paper, your decisions, your thoughts will begin to line up with the version of you that you want to become. And once your thoughts align, your decisions will align and then your actions will align. And piece by piece, the life that you want or the version of you that you want to become starts coming closer to you. So now you've envisioned that perfect future. Here's something you need to understand and you need to accept. The person you are today sitting there watching this video, wherever you are, you're not quite the version of you that can achieve that life. You haven't grown into the person or obtained the abilities that you need to create that version of you. That's why you're not living it. Now, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but you do need to hear the truth. The version of you that's capable of living that dream life, your best version of you, has evolved from who you are today into that version. So think of yourself today as a flawed version and your future self that you want to become, that's like the evolved version. So to construct this best version of you, you have to level up your skills, you have to level up your mindset, and you have to level up your actions. It's also important to understand that the current version of you may have some weak foundations. And this is just down to the pain or trauma that life has thrown at you. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. We all have been through experiences, including myself. So if that's your starting point, you may have to dig out the old and relay a new foundation. 
as you stand on this new, stronger, more solid platform, you can plan, adapt, and project manage a bigger future for yourself. There's a quote I absolutely love from Ralph Waldo Emerson. He says, the mind, once stretched by a new idea, never returns to its original dimensions. And the same can be said for yourself as well. Once you stretch yourself in becoming the best version of you, you can never go back to old ways. Because as you grow, your vision for what's possible grows too. It's like a cycle of becoming and building something incredible piece by piece. For example, the version of me four years ago in 2020 couldn't have put out these YouTube videos. I wouldn't have been able to run an online community because I wasn't the version of me who was capable to do so. I couldn't work with clients one on one because I wasn't that version of me. So the key question that you need to ask yourself here is what does the best version of me look like? How does that person think? What habits have they created? Maybe more importantly, what habits have they let go of? What fears have they overcome? Answering these questions doesn't just give you a blueprint, but it allows you to start moving your current self closer to your future self. It's a simple yet life-changing tool that will help you prioritize actions and stimulate self-improvement. Grab a pen and paper and let me show you how it works. You wanna create three rows and label them. Stop, start, and continue. Put all of your daily habits, I mean everything that you do, into these three categories. This exercise will not only highlight what's working for you, but more importantly, what's not working for you. And it will help you set a clear path for the new habits that will be beneficial to you. So in the stop section, this is as simple as it sounds. Identify habits or actions that are holding you back. Ask yourself, what habits or actions do I do every day that are stopping my progress? What do I need to stop doing to move closer to my goals? This could be anything from procrastinating, doubting yourself. This could be scrolling. This could be watching too much television. It could be drinking too much alcohol, eating too much junk food. In the start section, again, as simple as it sounds, you get really clear and you write out the habits, skills, or actions that you need to start doing in order to move you forward. So a nice and easy question for you could be, what new actions do I need to start doing today to build the life that I want? What skills do I need to develop or what skills do I need to learn in order to become the best version of myself? Now it's super important that you only add one or two new things into your life. Don't overwhelm yourself. Don't try to learn 10 different things. Stick to one or two. Now you may need to work with a mentor one-on-one. -on -one. You might need to join an online community to help you identify the gap and create actionable steps. Obviously I'll link mine in the description. And in the continue section, this category helps you recognize the positive things that you're already doing. Cause I'm sure you're doing some great things at the moment. So in this section, you wanna ask yourself, what am I doing now that's working well for me? What habits do I need to optimize? This could be anything from your commitment to continuous learning. Maybe you've got a really positive attitude. Maybe you're really disciplined with your finances. Maybe it's what you do for the two hours after you wake up that detriments you. The beauty of this exercise is that it's simple, okay? It's stop, start, and continue, but it will provide you with so much clarity. Pause the video if you wanna do it now. I'm being serious. By getting clear on your behaviors and daily habits, you can create a roadmap for personal growth, which is not only realistic, but actionable too. Celebrate your strength, but be real about your weaknesses. Learn to love the journey towards becoming the best version of you and revisit this exercise regularly. Life changes, we evolve, we enter new chapters or new seasons. And as you grow, your answers to these questions might change too. Maybe new habits or old habits might creep back in. It's also important to be aware that you may not be consciously aware of all of your actions. How many times a day do you unlock your phone? Why do you do that? That's another level of awareness. Now, before I go any further, if you're getting some value out of this video, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button so you can keep up to date when I release more thought-provoking videos. I thank you and I appreciate you. Right, as you gain some clarity on your actions and your habits, it's important to remember that this journey is about becoming, not just doing. It's easy to get trapped in the doing part, focusing solely on getting the tasks done as if they're just a tick box exercise. The point of this is to evolve into a new person. Imagine if you wanted to be an author and you wanted to write a book. Writing every day is essential, obviously, but it's not the complete picture. You also need to become someone with an author's mindset. You need to become someone who can see stories in their everyday life, who can handle criticism, who enjoys putting words together. 
That becomes your identity, not just tasks or activities that you need to get done. So who do I need to become instead of what do I need to do? That's one of the greatest questions you could ask yourself. And more often than not, it isn't about doing, it's about being. Getting a fresh perspective, growing through experiences and redefining your character traits. When you focus on becoming, your vision seeps into every single part of your body, every single part of your life, and it all turns into actions. Those actions turn into habits and those habits become character traits. And eventually, these character traits form the foundation of this new upgraded version of you. The doing and the becoming go hand in hand, cause and effect. One of the most life-changing things you can do on this journey involves your decision-making process. It's about making choices today that your future self will thank you for. This method is what I literally call decision-making through future self. This makes sure that your today's choices are aligned with tomorrow's goals. Imagine every decision you face, no matter how small, as a stepping stone leading you closer to this best version of you. This simple question changed my life and I believe it can do the same for you. What would the best version of myself do in this situation? This question gives you direction. It can be literally become your guide. This question ensures that your actions remain consistent with the goals of your future self. It will naturally navigate your path closer to that desired life. And again, visualize your future self. What have they achieved? How do they spend their time? What do they give their time and energy to? What do they not give their time and energy to? This vision literally creates a North Star for you. And that North Star is what you want to follow. When you're faced with a really big decision or a really big choice, connect with your future self. Close your eyes and ask yourself, what aligns with my future self? What would my future self do? Even if it's a small decision, like spending time with friends or working on a project that gets you closer to your goals. Close your eyes. Which option aligns with the future that I want? Your future self will give you the answer and all you have to do is follow it. You also need to understand the reality of compound interest in every aspect of your life. Each single decision might seem insignificant on their own, but collectively, these choices are compounding over time and they are literally impacting who you become and shaping your life. This decision making through future self also extends to your habits, forming habits now that your future self will benefit from. If you want to be more healthier, more knowledgeable, more spiritually connected, what habits support that reality? Who do you need to surround yourself with to become that person? Who do you need to remove yourself from? Start these habits today and practice. This technique is a skill that you will get better at the more you use it. You can begin with smaller decisions if you want to build that confidence in your ability to choose things that are in alignment with your future self. And as you practice it, it will get easier. There's so much power in this approach. Every choice becomes a conscious step towards becoming the person that is capable of living that dream life. Become conscious in your daily choices. They really are creating your future. As you walk on this journey towards becoming the best version of yourself, a problem that I see come up regularly is self-sabotage or imposter syndrome. That internal conflict between your current self and the version you want to become. Understanding self-sabotage and then addressing it is crucial for unlocking your full potential. Self-sabotage can manifest in so many different forms, whether that looks like procrastination, whether it looks like self-doubt, a fear of failure, maybe it's comfort eating, maybe it's alcohol abuse. These beliefs can really mess your progress, not because you're incapable of achieving your goals. You can do them. You really can achieve them because there's a part of you that doesn't believe that you're worthy of these goals. So you start resisting change. There's parts of the mind that doesn't want you to evolve as wild as that may sound. Why do we sabotage ourselves? At its core, it's a protection mechanism. Your subconscious mind wants to keep you in the bounds of what it perceives as safe. There was a time in human history where we needed that protection because there was real danger from being eaten or attacked by wild animals. But we don't live in those times anymore where danger and fear was equal. Today, people have a lot of fear, but there's not really a lot of danger. The mind hasn't caught up with this yet. It doesn't understand that. Unfortunately, this safety net can trap you in the comfort zone and your comfort zone is very far from your growth zone. We as humans, we are supposed to grow. So how do you confront this real issue? First, awareness. Awareness is key to everything. Recognize when you are self-sabotaging. Are you delaying tasks? Are you doubting your abilities due to your imagination? Are you eating unhealthy despite knowing better? Are you abusing social media? Are you abusing alcohol? Identifying these patterns is the first step to releasing them. 
Secondly, understand why. You have to dig deep to uncover the root of this self-sabotage. Is it a fear of failure? Okay, where did you learn that fear? Where did these fears come from? Because you were not born with any of these fears. You were actually born fearless. So this is all learnt thinking. This is what I help my online community do. We get together once a week and I help them on their journey towards the best version of themselves. Understanding your why provides clarity and direction. And then lastly, you have to reframe your mindset with empowering beliefs. If you believe you're not a morning person, you reframe it. I am a morning person. I love waking up early. I love the peace that 5 a.m. brings. I mean, I'm talking about myself. I genuinely love the peace that 5 a.m. brings. Your whole life is a projection of what you believe about yourself. And I know I said lastly, but I missed one out. Your environment really plays a significant factor on self-sabotage. If you don't have people around you who are on a journey to better themselves, become part of a community where you are supported. I'll put the details to mine in the description. Check it out. And finally, accept that it's a journey. Beating yourself up for past limiting beliefs or putting yourself down is not going to help you. You have to recognize that you're human and progress involves learning from your setbacks. If you're making an effort to become a better version of you, then be proud of that. Celebrate the small wins. Everyone starts at a different start line. So don't compare yourself to other people. Remember, releasing self-sabotage is not a one-off battle. It's something that you need to be working on and should be working on for a very long time. It's a process. Your inner conflict may be real. The things you've experienced are certainly real. Every choice that you take in favor of the best version of you is reshaping your life. And remember, the journey is the goal. That's all I've got for you in today's video. If you got some value out of this video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel too. And look, if you're ready to actually work on yourself and you want to become a new version of you, check out my community. I'll put a link in the description and don't forget to check out the video popping up on screen now where I talk about how to let go of your anger. I'll see you in the next one.